Hey everybody, how are you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. And today, I want to continue having a little bit of a conversation that I feel like I continue to have sort of by myself on my own little island about this exact sort of thought or philosophy. But I do want to continue some ideas and conversations about what Nintendo may be doing or thinking moving forward about the current Nintendo Switch hardware, which does include the Lite and the Switch OLED, and whatever plans that they may be having for next generation hardware. Now, it should be noted that a lot of the motivation for this conversation does have to do with some titles that we know should be in development by Nintendo or even third-party companies exclusively for the Nintendo Switch that we still don't know a lot about. So in many ways, this conversation is driven by a couple of pieces of software and some games, but it's also driven by, you know, my own personal opinions about what Nintendo's business model may be, where I personally, only as a fan myself personally, see the Nintendo Switch sitting currently between the sales success, but also the age of the hardware, the competition from the next-gen consoles, PS5 and Xbox Series X, and just some of the other larger happenings within the industry. And, you know, I mean, you guys have heard me say this over the course of the past year, I'm really starting to see Nintendo getting close to a tipping point where I don't really think they can continue the current Switch hardware too much longer than it's already been going. Sort of thinking that maybe the Switch OLED might be the last possible attempt they could make to extend the life of the 2017 Switch in any way. And at some point, they gotta be moving on to something bigger and better sooner. Now, I am still working on my No More Heroes 3 review. That video is turning out to be an absolute monster. And I'm not somebody who traditionally reviews games. And of course, this is one that's so important to me. And I'm so passionate about the franchise, a game I've waited for for over a decade that I have a lot to say. So I've already redone it once and I may be parsing it down or even redoing it again or turning it into a different kind of video. Not quite sure yet, but that is in process. I know a lot of people are waiting for me to discuss No More Heroes 3 now that it's actually out and I've played and completed it. So that will be coming sometime soon, but like I said, that's that video is becoming quite a beast, so I might have to change my approach to the whole concept. And so in lieu of that, I still have some other conversations and videos that I want to have, and I don't want to get too behind on some of this stuff, which is what brought me back to this conversation about the state of the current Switch hardware, which I love to death. You guys know, I love the Switch. It's not about me disliking the 2017 Switch hardware. It's just about me analyzing where I think Nintendo may find themselves currently. And like I already referenced that tipping point that I think they might be coming to. And when we look at some of the more mysterious titles we've been waiting to see show up on the Switch, I wonder if that's maybe a sign at least the mysteriousness of these titles, if that mystery is a sign that things are slowly starting to shift behind the scenes to something next gen. Of course, before we jump any deeper into the next gen Nintendo topic, I like to remind you guys I'm always trying to grow the channel here on Rule of Two Review. I upload every single week. I discuss all things Nintendo. I discuss all things Metroid and I discuss all things gaming. So as you watch this video, if you seem to like what I'm doing and what you hear, then I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel. So the Nintendo Switch OLED is currently about to be the newest, hottest thing in the world of Nintendo, the newest piece of Nintendo hardware. A lot of people are definitely very excited for it, which I think is totally fine and totally cool, and I'm glad for everyone who is excited for it. It's now less than a month away from release, as crazy as that is. We all know it's releasing on October 8th, the same day as Metroid Tread, which is, boy, what an exciting time. And so, you know, we're about three or so weeks away from this new piece of Nintendo hardware. And I've discussed on two very lengthy videos my overall thoughts on the Switch OLED and what's happening there. And, you know, I don't want to retread it too much, but as just a quick sort of reminder, um, I'm not excited about the Switch OLED. It's not really a product or a device that appeals to me. It's focused on enhancing the handheld Switch experience, not the TV Switch experience. And I play 95, probably 97% of my Switch on my TV. So while I think it is a cool and impressive product for what it is, and I love that it's got a nicer screen and a bigger screen, I think that stuff is great. Um, it just doesn't feature updates that actually appeal to me and how I play my Nintendo Switch currently. 
So it's a device that I just have no interest in, even tying it to the release and the marketing of Metroid Dread. Yeah, that's cool for Metroid, but it's not cool for selling me on the OLED because I just have no reason to buy or play it currently. Maybe I change my mind next year, I don't really know, but right now, it's just not for me. Now, of course, it should be noted, and I have said this before, that I do think the Switch OLED, regardless of my lack of interest or anyone else's lack of interest, I mean, the thing is going to be a big hit. I mean, if you know anything about Nintendo's track records, their most divisive games and their most divisive console releases, with the Wii U as the sole exception, you know, at least not, we're not going as far back as the Virtual Boy. Let's talk about the last 10, 15 years. With the Wii U as the one exception, their most divisive games and hardware releases always still end up being really successful. And when it comes to anything Nintendo Switch or branded as a Switch, I mean, Nintendo can't keep those things in stores. Everyone is going to be running out to buy them. I mean, the pre-orders, like, were impossible to find for the Switch OLED as well. And I didn't even look for a pre-order, but I saw everyone talking about it that day that no one could find the Switch OLED pre-orders. So, you know, it's going to be a successful, I think, device for Nintendo. And just because I don't really care for it or have interest in it doesn't mean that I'm bothered by that. I'm glad for the success. Nintendo is obviously my favorite company, so seeing them have some success and be profitable or what have you, sure, that's great. I feel the same way about Sony and Microsoft, too, because I like them all. And so the OLED is going to definitely make a bit of a splash, but I also think that splash may not last too long simply because it's so focused on the portable experience. The Switch Lite, for example, a very successful device, and it did make an initial splash, but I think we saw any hype or conversation around it die very quickly because it wasn't really enhancing or changing anything significant. And so once the excitement of the Switch OLED kind of comes and goes and passes, that's where we come back to what I said was sort of my motivation for wanting to make this video, is the fact that, you know, we have to come back to just the games. I mean, that's the real defining feature of any good console. It's the games, it's the software, it's the library, and it's most specifically the exclusive library. Like, the Xbox One was a quality console, but there weren't a lot of exclusives, so halfway through that console's life, it no longer mattered that it was a well-built and well-running machine. There weren't really the games to play. There weren't exclusive that justified owning it over a PS4. And, you know, the Series X is great for what it is, and I certainly want one for Halo, but until Halo, the first big, you know, exclusive game comes out, I have no interest in that. But I did need a PS5 because there's already been a couple of great exclusives that I've really enjoyed. Now, when it comes to Nintendo specifically and why I think it might be safe for them to be moving on to the next generation hardware behind the scenes, which I think we all think they would already be doing right now anyway, uh, there are three titles that jump to mind that to me, when I think about what's happening with them, when they have a chance at releasing, how mysterious they are, one of them hasn't even actually been announced, the other two have been announced, I feel like the reason that these games and these titles are so mysterious and we haven't heard any updates or announcements for them is because, and I recently touched on this, I think there's a chance that these titles are being moved to the next generation machine, either to be exclusive to Nintendo's next generation or more likely to be fair, more likely to be cross-generation releases. And you guys even already know what they are, right? One is Mario Kart 9, which is not officially announced, but we all know that Nintendo's planning a new Mario Kart game. I discussed it a few weeks ago as well. The other would be Bayonetta 3. Where the hell is that game, Platinum? What is going on with Bayonetta? It's very frustrating that game is so mysterious. And of course, the Big Daddy you guys have heard me mention so many times, Metroid Prime 4. Now, we have to step aside from the Mario Kart thing because, like I said, it's not a real officially announced game. Just because we know they're making a Mario Kart game of some kind, whether it's called Mario Kart 9 or whatever the name is, we know they're working on it, but it's not yet real. So let's step away from that one thing and just focus on the two announced games, which, of course, is Metroid Prime 4 and Bayonetta 3. I mean, these games were both announced in 2017, the first year of the Switch's life. And both of them have been completely silent and ghosted since. With the exception of the update about Metroid Prime 4 and the choice to scrap the first version, scrap the original team, and restart the game's development with Retro Studios. That's a huge update, and that definitely changes 
I think some of our patience when it comes to waiting for information on that title because we know what happened with it behind the scenes. Bayonetta 3, for all we know, went through something identical to that, but they just haven't said it to us. Or maybe the game is taking that long to develop, and so they're just being silent. Maybe something is going horribly wrong with that game. Maybe the scope is so ambitious, it takes extra long to develop it. Or, per the whole theory of this video, maybe a decision was already made a year or two into development to move it to the new hardware, and maybe kind of moving whatever their work in progress version of that game was over to the new hardware dev kits whenever that might have happened slowed the process down and so they had to take whatever percentage of game they had done move it to the new hardware and then continue to rebuild and complete the game on that new hardware that's the kind of thing which again could have happened to metroid and to mario kart that can slow the process down and why you wouldn't even want to talk about or discuss the game because by default discussing or showing metroid prime 4 bayonetta 3 or a new mario kart game if these games are meant to release next gen by default you might almost have to be announcing or confirming next generation hardware just to discuss or show these games in theory of course it's possible to know any of this stuff you know the same reminder i always give is what i'll continue to give we don't know I don't know any of this information right now. Sure, a lot of us in, a, in my position will hear behind the scenes things and rumors and updates that don't necessarily go public, but I don't mind telling you that I don't know anything about these three titles. I knew some things about a possible 2D Metroid before Metroid Dread was released. I was hearing that kind of stuff for over a year before Metroid Dread was announced. I didn't know it was Dread and I didn't know it was going to be announced for sure at E3. But I definitely had heard some things were going on there. When it comes to Metroid Prime 4, even me as a big Metroid fan, man, I haven't heard squat. So I'm just giving you my theories as a fan of gaming, as a fan of Nintendo, and as a fan of these three franchises, which are just the example franchises that work for me in this kind of conversation. And just how I analyze Nintendo's business, the release of the Switch, the Switch OLED, the timing of the PS5 and the Series X, and the fact that I think the next generation has to be around the corner in the next probably two years, I just feel like I'm seeing stars align for the next Metroid, the next Bayonetta, and the next Mario Kart. Three massive titles and three massive franchises. I see the stars aligning for them all to coincide with the announcement and the release of a next generation version of Nintendo hardware. I know that many of you may not agree or even think that this whole concept is just totally crazy and bananas. And that's fine. I mean, again, I don't know that this is true, so you may be right. Maybe this is bananas. But it's just how I feel, you know? I've, I've, I'm 41 years old, man. I've been around for a while. So that's decades and decades worth of gaming and Nintendo fanship that I'm just using to inform my opinion and my theory, nothing more than a theory and a guess about what could be happening, okay? And I just feel like the Switch itself can't last much longer. You guys have, have heard me say this on plenty of videos, including the two videos I made about the Switch OLED itself. Um, I, don't, I don't know that a real Switch Pro is coming unless it's going to be such a significant Pro upgrade that it literally makes itself next generation just by dint of how much powerful it will become. So whether it's called Switch Pro or Switch 2, I think this next hardware from Nintendo, whenever they announce it, will qualify as next gen just based on how much more powerful I would expect it to be. Which also makes it more exciting when you think about a Metroid Prime 4 or a Bayonetta 3 running on something that powerful. Again, we go back to the potential for this be, these being cross-gen releases. And when we see how successful the current Switch is and the install base is going to be over 100 million by the time that this next generation console would theoretically launch. I don't think Nintendo's going to be willing to ignore 100 million install base for the current Switch. It worked well for Breath of the Wild. Why wouldn't they want to do the same for Metroid, Bayonetta, Mario Kart, or any other titles that we're not even talking about? I think that the first probably six months of first party Nintendo releases on the next hardware will very likely be cross-generation, so I think we need to prepare ourselves for that to happen. And honestly, just speaking for myself, I wouldn't even mind if that was the case. 
Maybe with Metroid, I would prefer for that to just be totally committed to the next generation hardware, but there's always the risk of people not being able to find the next generation hardware and still wanting to play that game. So you got 100 million people with Switches, give them access to that game. Give them access to Metroid Prime 4. You know, that's just how I currently see it. Now, I also think that there's probably some movement on the next Mario game behind the scenes, and I have a video around that exact topic planned for the next week or two, and so I'll, I'll save the bulk of that conversation for that video. But I do think that Mario finds itself in a curious position where I could see the next Mario game being either way. It could either release as an early cross-gen title for the next-gen machine, or that could be something being saved for after maybe that first year, and that could be a game built entirely on the next generation hardware, just like Mario Odyssey was, and released as a next gen exclusive, maybe after the first year of the next gen console releases. I mean, again, I don't want to go any more down that rabbit hole because I have a, a, a specific video I want to discuss that topic about. But I think it's worth noting that these are the kinds of things we start to think about and dissect when it comes to thinking about the next generation Nintendo hardware and you know, I'll end the video with this reminder. I love the current Switch. I think the Switch OLED is going to be very popular and successful for a lot of people and for Nintendo. And so it's not that I'm, like, asking for Nintendo to move on from the Switch. I mean, I'm excited about the idea, but it's not that I'm asking for them to do it. It's just, it's just what I think is going to happen. Does that make sense? Can you guys kind of understand the difference of what I'm saying? It's not my request to have it happen just yet. But if I was going to place money in Vegas on it, I think that they're working on something. And I think in the next two or so years, it's going to happen. And so big titles that we've been waiting to see revealed on the Switch, Metroid Prime 4, Bayonetta 3, Mario Kart. I think that these games have not yet shown up because there's a great chance they're meant to be for the next generation console. So that's what I think. That's my kind of overall predictions and conversation about this concept. What do you guys think about my opinions and my guesses about what's going on? Do you agree with them or do you not agree with them? Do you have a totally different theory? Whatever you think, talk about it below. And with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Relive to Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.